Hello there and welcome to World News Program, streaming to you live on All 24 News. I'm your host, Kieran Fitzzachary, and up next are the headlines. In just 24 hours, five Zionist massacres killed 40 Palestinians, including children and women in Gaza, during relentless airstrikes, while displacement camps in Rafah and Khan Yunis were bombarded. Zionist occupation devastates Gaza, destroying over half of its buildings. 30,000 wounded residents urgently need treatment abroad, and the resistance vows fierce response to any occupation forces entering Gaza. That's next. Also coming up, Algeria strongly condemns the Nusayrat camp massacre and urges swift trials for those responsible as the Security Council endorses Biden's ceasefire proposal. Also ahead, the African Union Committee of Ten on Security Council reform renews its commitment to the common African position, advocating for the removal of obstacles to African demands and unity against division. Stay tuned, the details are right after the break. Hello again and welcome to the details. First off in our topical news, in the past 24 hours, there were five more devastating massacres by the Zionist forces in Gaza, resulting in the death of 40 Palestinians and injuring 218 others, making the toll of the ongoing genocidal war reach with over 37,124 killed and 84,712 wounded since October 7th. The attacks targeted various areas, including Arabiba, Kherbet al adas and Eil Hashash in Rafah, central Gaza and Gaza City, claiming innocent lives, including women and children. The relentless bombings even struck tents for displaced families in Mawasi, Rafah, and Khan Yunis, driving more people to seek refuge elsewhere. The United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees, UNRWA, estimates that over half of Gaza's buildings have been destroyed as the Zionist entity persists in its aggression on the besieged strip. In a post on the Axe platform on Monday, the UN agency described the devastation in Gaza as dramatic, emphasizing that the process of clearing the rubble left behind by the Zionist aggression will span years. Over 30,000 Gaza victims of Zionist aggression need treatment abroad with critical shortages in local hospitals risking their lives, especially for those with breathing issues. Usama Ayadi reports. Amid the devastating health situation in Gaza and the closure of most of the health care facilities, more than 30,000 Palestinian wounded civilians are in severe need for permission to leave the Strip to receive treatment. The catastrophic circumstances in which wounded Palestinians live inside the remaining hospitals reflect the brutality of the Zionist assault on unarmed citizens of this trip. Our hospital is overwhelmed by such a large number of casualties, most of whom are women, children and the elderly. It far exceeds our capacity. Hospitals in Northern and Central Strip have become home to hundreds of Palestinians with complex health conditions. However, they have not received the necessary treatment due to the severe shortage of medicines and the inability to leave the Strip for a better chance to receive decent health care. Health facilities exceeded their maximum capacity in the Strip given the large number of wounded Palestinians who flocked there after several Zionist attacks on various regions. The victims lay on the floors and corridors of the hospitals after having been briefly treated. I have been in front of the hospital door since April 16, 
Since April 20 or April 26, I've been waiting to be transferred abroad and waiting for the crossing to open so I can travel and continue treatment because treatment is not available here. And so far, the crossing is closed. In nine months of genocide on Gaza, the health system has been ferociously attacked, with the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Hospital already on the verge of collapse, with only one generator still functioning. Severe shortages of medical supplies, medicines and the shortage of health care workers have further worsened the crisis. The Palestinian resistance has warned the Zionist occupation forces who entered Gaza of repercussions for the killing of thousands of Palestinians. Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigade's Fatah's military wing shared a video on Telegram showing their fighters preparing to confront the invaders, emphasizing their determination. And on Monday, the resistance targeted the Zionist forces near Khan Yunis in southern Gaza. Al-Qassam Brigade's Hamas's military wing showcased footage of the operation on Telegram. <laughs> Algeria strongly denounced the brutal massacre in the Nusayrat camp in Gaza, perpetrated by the Zionist entity last Saturday. The Algerian Foreign Ministry statement condemned the occupation's continued escalation of violence as a blatant disregard for international norms and UN Security Council resolutions. Algeria urged international judicial bodies to swiftly prosecute those responsible for these atrocities, labeling them as a stain on humanity's conscience. In light of this additional episode of the heinous crimes committed by the aggressive Israeli occupation, Algeria reaffirms the Security Council's inevitable responsibility to curb the Zionist aggression, relieve the injury and plight of the Palestinian people, and put a definitive end to the Israeli occupation's invasion, and put a definitive end to the Israeli occupation's evasion of accountability, prosecution, and punishment. Algerian Foreign Minister Ahmed Attaf criticized the UN Security Council's failure to hold the ongoing genocidal war against the Palestinian people, which has persisted for over eight months. Speaking at the ministerial meeting of the African Committee for the Reform of the Security Council, Attaf emphasized that the Council's inability to rein in Zionist aggression in Gaza highlights the precarious state of current international relations. The resilient and steadfast Gaza has been enduring a full-scale genocidal war for over eight months. The UN Security Council has been unable to curb the brutal Israeli aggression inflicted upon it, nor has it provided means of relief, sustenance and survival. Meanwhile, our continent is experiencing a concerning rise in tension and conflict across all its five regions, without exception. This is exacerbated by the growing threat of foreign interventions, which have become a key factor in igniting conflicts and fostering divisions among the people of the same nation and organization. The United Nations Security Council finally endorsed a U.S.-backed ceasefire proposal to halt occupying Israel's assault on Gaza. The resolution, with a 14 vote and Russia abstaining, supports three phase plan including ceasefire, captive exchange, and reconstruction. While the U.S. claims Zionist acceptance, some Zionist officials seek Hamas's elimination. The resolution urges both parties to implement the plan and conditionally, and Hamas welcomed the resolution and expressed readiness for negotiations. Gracias. Algeria's UN representative Ammar bin Jama supported the US resolution for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza, backing Palestinian demands and highlighting the urgent need for Gaza's reconstruction. He pledged efforts to collaborate with the international community and work closely with Palestinians and mediators for the resolution. These martyrs for us are alive with their Lord, watching over us from heaven. Algerians deeply feel the suffering of the Palestinians, and with their own history of struggle against occupation, they understand and support the Palestinians' legitimate and just demands, noting that as a free and dignified people, Palestinians will never accept living under occupation and will never abdicate their fight for liberation. To us, Palestinian lives matter. 
And earlier, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken began his Middle East tour in Cairo on Monday, aiming to promote President Biden's Gaza ceasefire initiative. Meeting with Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, discussion centered on reopening the closed Rafah crossing between Egypt and Gaza. Being held hostage. The best way, my message to governments throughout the region, to people throughout the region is, if you want a ceasefire, press Hamas to say yes. If you want to alleviate the terrible suffering of Palestinians in Gaza, press Hamas to say yes. If you want to get all the hostages home, press Hamas to say yes. If you want to put Israelis and Palestinians alike on the path to more durable peace and security, press Hamas to say yes. To other topical news now, Algerian President Abdul Majid Taboon hosted Dr. Shams Din Hafiz, the Dean of the Paris Mosque, on Monday at the presidential headquarters in Al Moradia Palace. Algerian President Abdul Majid Taboon met with the heads of delegations attending the 11th session of the ministerial meeting of the African Union Committee at 10 on Security Council reform on Monday. A meeting attended by Algerian Foreign Minister Ahmed Attaf and Director of the Algerian Presidency Office, Balam Balam, was held at the presidential headquarters. And following the, uh, the audience, I'm saying, Sierra Leone's Foreign Minister Timothy Moussa Kaba hailed Algiers' meeting as a significant step in bolstering African unity to address the historical injustices faced by the continent in international bodies. I express my gratitude to President Abdelmajid Taboon and the Algerian Minister of Foreign Affairs, as well as to the government and people of this wonderful country for hosting us in Algeria. This 11th ministerial meeting on the reform of the United Nations Security Council is the result of the consultative summit held in Oyala last year. It is an indicator and a strong commitment by the members of this commission to fulfill the responsibility assigned to them by the African Commission to represent the African continent in order to redress the historic injustice imposed on Africa due to its marginalization from permanent membership in the Security Council. The 11th Ministerial Meeting of the African Union Committee of Ten on Security Council reform concluded in Algiers, reiterating the collective commitment to Africa's stance on UN reform. Algerian Foreign Minister Ahmed Attaf emphasized the aim to correct historical injustices and address global imbalances with growing international recognition of Africa's rightful demand for increased representation in the Security Council. Awalan. Firstly, reaffirming our collective commitment to the African Common Position on the reform of the UN Security Council, which is distinguished from other international stances, as it represents the aspirations of an entire continent, not just specific countries, and aims to rectify a historical injustice that everyone agrees is long overdue for resolution. Secondly, highlighting the growing international awareness of the legitimacy and the validity of our demands to enhance African representation on the Security Council, especially in light of the increasing international support for the African Common Position. Ahmed Attaf equally reaffirmed Algeria's dedication to the unified African stance and promised to persist in advocating for common African issues at the Security Council with honesty, integrity and responsibility. In the light of these results, Algeria will remain faithful to the common African position and to the noble objectives of which this honorable commission was created.
Algeria reiterates its commitment from this rostrum to spare no effort in preserving African rank and file unity and in strengthening its pillars and raising its voice. For its part, Algeria undertakes to continue its efforts at the level of the Security Council to defend with total sincerity and responsibility our common causes with the framework of our political bloc in the Council, which is the A3 group. Sierra Leone's Foreign Minister Timothy Musa Kaba emphasized the imperative of reaching an African consensus for genuine reform of the Security Council on Monday. Speaking at the opening of the 11th Ministerial Meeting of the African Committee on U.S. Security Council reform, Timothy urged African leaders to expedite negotiations towards achieving the desired reform, aiming to rectify the historical injustices faced by Africa. And our main objective in this meeting, therefore, is to ensure that any recommendations we propose for consideration by the heads of state and government should be forward-looking and action-oriented. I must ultimately be, I must, and it must ultimately be geared towards speedily rectifying the historical injustice of Africa's non-representation in the permanent category and under-representation in the non-permanent category of the UN Security Council. And for his part, Adeo Bencoli, the African Union's Commissioner for Political Affairs, Peace and Security, emphasized the need to work for Africa's benefit and push for UN Security Council reform. Speaking at the opening of the 11th Ministerial Meeting of the African Union Committee on Security Council Reform, he praised Algeria's support and outlined what needs to be done to make Africa stronger. The coordinator at heads of state and government level is Excellency. It is important before doing this to express profound, profuse appreciation to the government and people of the People's Democratic Republic of Algeria. The hospitality is usually very legendary. And once again, the African Union really appreciates your support for this process, being a champion for counterterrorism, being a champion for the African voice at the international <clears throat> Level. Army General Saeed Chengriha, Algeria's Chief of Staff of the National People's Army, warned against targeting nations' cultural identity in hybrid wars. At a symposium on digital content preservation, he stressed the importance of modern strategies to counter threats to national memory and protect Algeria's historical legacy from distortion. لقد تغير مفهوم الأمن مع تغير طبيعة الحروب حيث أصبحنا نتحدث عن الأمن الهوياتي the concept of security has evolved with the changing nature of warfare as we now talk about identity security social security and cyber security in light of the new wars being waged in the world today or what are known as hybrid wars the media, particularly social media, have become essential tools and resources in destabilization strategies aimed at attacking the cultural and civilizational identities of nations and working to hinder the process of building their future through the disintegration of national identity, the distortion of history, disinformation and the questioning of national symbols. من خلال طمس الهوية الوطنية وتشويه التاريخ ونشر المعلومات المضللة والتشكيك. In Italy, the far-right Brothers of Italy party, led by Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni, won in both Rome and Brussels. They got around 29% of the vote, according to the Italian Interior Ministry. Prime Minister Meloni said she was proud and claimed her government was the strongest in the G7 and Europe. So I want to say thank you. Thank you to the majority of Italians who have continued to choose Brothers of Italy and the center-right 
I want to say that I'm proud of the results of Brothers of Italy, but I'm also very proud of the results of Forza Italia, of the results of the Liga. I am proud that the majority governing this nation has managed to grow together. And in Germany, a far-right party got second place in the election with 16% of the vote. They came after the Conservatives, but did better than the parties in charge. Chancellor Scholz said no, no to having early elections, just like France, after his group didn't do well in the European elections. <laughs> The election results was bad for the three ruling parties. No one has an interest in moving on. But at the same time, it's a question of doing our job, of ensuring that our country modernizes, that it moves forward. And moreover, to ensure that the approval of the citizens regarding our policy is always greater, in order to be able to witness the result of this work on the occasion of the next federal elections. And in Spain, official results reveal that the right-wing popular party, the primary opposition party, secured 22 seats in the European Parliament. Meanwhile, the ruling socialist and their prime minister, Pedro Sanchez, clinched 20 seats, while the far-right Vox party made gains with six seats. Paris Mayor Anne Hidalgo was surprised that President Macron wants to hold elections before the Olympics, thinking it's risky. But Thomas Bach, who heads the Olympics, says France's political problems won't harm the Games. Here's a slim set. As the Olympic Games approach, tensions are escalating in Paris, particularly following President Emmanuel Macron's surprise announcement of new parliamentary elections. Macron's decision has sparked concerns regarding the election outcomes just days before the sporting event. The voting rounds are scheduled for June 30 and July 7, the latter occurring less than three weeks before the Olympic Games commence on July 26. Paris Mayor Anne Hidalgo, a member of the Socialist Party, criticized the move, calling it one more blow by the president. Despite struggling to understand Macron's reasoning, Hidalgo attempted to maintain a positive outlook. To choose the dissolution of parliament before the games is an extra blow that I struggle to understand. But since I'm a pragmatist and a fighter, I'm going to fight so that democracy can win in our country. And obviously so that the games are a success. And I have few doubts about it. Fortunately, all the installation and setup work for the games and the infrastructures is behind us. All we have to do now is to welcome the whole world. Meanwhile, Olympic Committee President Thomas Bach expressed confidence that the political upheaval in France would not disrupt the Olympic event. <laughs> This is a democratic process that will not disrupt the Games. We see great unity in favor of the Olympic Games, Paris 2024. And you can feel the enthusiasm that is obvious here. France is used to holding elections. They will do it one more time. There will be a new government and everyone will support the Olympics. Amid the unprecedented political, economic and social unrest, France faces a downing challenge as it stands before two major events shaping the nation's political landscape through elections and showcasing its international standing on the Olympic stage. Well, that's the end of our news. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time, have a good one.